Hi there, Robin here. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the Pile PMX-466, one of their new audio mixers featuring six channel input along with Bluetooth, MP3 player, and an audio interface. It also features 16 DSP settings for their effects. We're gonna be talking about all of this and more in this video. So here we are. This is the Pile PMX-466 offering you four mic inputs plus two additional line inputs off to the side, all lining up with the knobs down below. This machine uses combo jacks, so this way we only need to have one plug. We can either put in a three pin XLR or a quarter inch in the first four. Plus we then have additional channel five and six, which are both quarter inch. This unit does run on balanced or unbalanced connections and channel five can be used as a single mono input for channel five and six. They also include buttons just off to the side. The first one at the bottom is channel five and six to USB. This button is used whenever you wanna look down here at the Bluetooth MP3 player or if you're playing back from your computer. Talking about the computer, you also have a built-in audio interface which is one single channel going out, goes out in a two line setup. It's a mono signal, automatically lines itself up as a left and right when you're using a software program like Audacity. This unit also includes a built-in recording capability, so all you need to do is put in a basic USB stick and you can then press the actual record button. Now remember, the recording function doesn't allow you to hear what you're recording immediately. You have to play it back. So when you do use record functions in the actual mixer like this one here, you are gonna have to do some sampling with it, find out what levels work best for you, 15 second record, playback, do a couple of adjustments, play back and forth, record. Do that a few times, you'll find out what settings are gonna be best for your recording and then you're off. It's always recommended if you can to record straight to your actual computer, that's gonna be the best way to do that. You do not have to have channel five and six engaged to record, you simply plug in the USB cable. When you plug in the USB cable into the actual USB slot, this cable can then go to your computer. Now remember, they do include a cable for the actual unit in the box and they now include a power supply as well. We'll cover that in a second. But once you've actually plugged the unit into your computer, you can then use the actual recording features on your computer to record directly from here. It seems to work out very well. We're gonna do an audio sample of that today on this video, so you also get to hear exactly what it sounds like. So let's cover all the knobs and buttons that we see at the bottom. If we start on the actual far left side, we're gonna start with channel one, First button we have on top below the actual combo jack is the actual phantom power option for channel one through four. The next set of knobs that line up on channel one, starting at the top, all the red knobs, including the very first one, is our gain control, which allows us to increase or decrease how strong the actual signal being sent into the line is going to be, uh, giving us control between our line and microphone inputs. Easy enough to use. Then the next two, the blue ones, are gonna be for our crossover points for our high and low settings. Then we have the ability to dial in effects, which will be located over here. This allows each individual line to be set at its own level. If you want effects, turn them up. If you don't, just leave them down. Then the very last knob at the bottom is gonna be level, so we can then use this as a mixer, adjust everything accordingly, and then just slide up the main level. That feature itself repeats across all four channels, and then again on channel five and six, which is very nice. We still get a gain control, we are still gonna have our high-low controls, and we're still gonna have options for effects on that as well. Bring us to these two orange knobs right here, which are our effects. Then we have DSP select. And it used to have a knob here, well they still do in some of their models, and that's the dial between the effects. Here you simply push up and down the actual buttons depending on where you wanna be. And we're going to sample this when we do an audio test on it. After that, we then have our headphone level control, which is connected with this plug here, which says headphones. And the last is our slider main output, which is for the main outs on top. It also affects the audio interface, two channels going back to the computer. Now this unit for simplicity's sake has also given you an auxiliary input to channel five and six. So if you only have a 3.5 cable, you do not need to have quarter inch for everything. If you have a 3.5 to whatever piece of hardware you need to plug it into, that can just plug into here and it will also be part of five and six. Now, a nice little convenient thing to have on to the side. Let's talk about the actual power and operation of the unit. When you plug this unit into your computer via the USB cable, 
you no longer need to have a USB cable plugged in the back for power. So that one USB cable that came included can do the job both for a regular audio mixer and for audio interface connectivity, all through this one cable. Again, if I plug on the top here, you'll notice it says PC mode, it's in the computer. That's where it's drawing its power from as well as running the entire mixer, plus acting as the data connection between the computer and mixer. By simply plugging into the back and using the USB cable and using the USB power supply included with it, which is by the way, a generic one amp, five volt USB plug. So any USB plug will actually do for you. But using that allows you to run the actual unit. And that brings us to the very last button on top, the power button. It's not a switch in the back. It's an actual power button located right on top. So it's good to note where that is. So let's actually give this a sound test. We're gonna to listen to what the mic channel sounds like and then we'll listen to some of the effects. And here we are. We now have everything set up recording on the actual computer. And again, we're using Audacity for the software and for the microphone today, it's gonna to be the Pile PDMIC 70 condenser microphone. One of my favorites to have on the table lately. Uh, what we have set up here for channel one is we do have the phantom power on. We do have the gain set to, well, minus six right down at the bottom no worries there then we have our bass and treble set at unity so of course this is what it would sound like if i turn the highs down to minus 15 or if i turn the highs up to plus 15 you can definitely hear the change there we'll bring that back to unity then we'll follow the same so for the lows we're set at unity we can go minus 15 or we can go back to unity and then plus 15 big dramatic difference there for sure and then we'll bring that back down Right now I have no effects, so I am going to start by turning this up to 12 o'clock, 50% on the effects. Now notice we still don't have any effects because I don't have the level knob turned up yet. And the parameters have been left at the minimum. So we'll start at the bottom somewhere. So let's try number two. Number two, and then what we'll do is we'll bring the level up to 50%. This way we get a good listen to the background of the actual effects. And then we'll play around with the parameters. Parameters allow me to put some depth, some variation into this effect. So again, if we're up to 50%, we're all here. We can bring that all the way up to maximum and really dramatically bring that effect out. So again, we'll bring it down to 50% and then we'll bring it off. So let's uh, try another one. So that was hall number two. So let's go all the way up to uh, number eight, which will bring us to 225 millisecond delay. And that's, and that's number, eight. number eight. So here we are at number eight. Again, our gain, our gain level, level to our main out is 50%, and our parameter settings at minimum. And that is 225 millisecond delay. We'll crank that up to 50. Now we're at 50% with the parameters, and you can dramatically hear the difference there. And then we'll really make it exaggerated and bring it all the way to maximum. So let's try something else. So you can go all the way up to, uh, what was it? It was 1400 millisecond delay. So let's see what 1400 millisecond delay actually sounds like. That's number 13. So we're all the way up to number 13. Let's bring in that level. So now again, our level's at 50% for effects. And let's distort that out a bit here. Let's turn those effects levels up higher. 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 And bring a parameter up to maximum. Bring a parameter up to maximum. This really drags everything out. 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 All right, so we'll turn that down now. So we'll turn that down. There we go. That is what 1400 millisecond delay sounds like with a maximum parameter setting. So let's go to ping pong. So ping pong is better done in stereo. So again, if we go to 16, that's going to give us the maximum 1400 millisecond delay in ping pong. And we'll bring the parameters back down the minimum. And again, if we had this set up in stereo, you would actually hear the left and right transfer from left to right. Now, again, I have to bring the parameters up for it to fade back and forth between the left and right channels. And the more you exaggerate that, so bring it all the way up to maximum you're definitely going to be having that dragged out for quite a long time. So there we are. So those are the effects. That's the overall sound test we're going to use for today on this video here. Uh, again, not a complicated mixer to use. 
very user friendly, straightforward. I didn't have any problems getting this turned on and set up and, and running. It's, it's really friendly in that sense. Now, the best part is, is it does offer XLR's outputs and combo jacks inputs. Remember, your microphones should be three pin XLR whenever you're using a mic and quarter inch whenever you want to use the line input. There are no pad buttons on this unit here. Uh, but again, for the price, this is an absolutely dream of a mixer. Uh, you can't complain about it because you're always going, my gosh, how much can I actually get for the amount of money uh, Pile actually charges for this unit through Amazon? So that being said, I'm going to pretty much wrap this video up. I do like the mixers. They do always seem to be reliable when it comes to longevity. Uh, we've sold their previous line for quite a while since it came out three years ago. This is an add-on line to that product there. Uh, they just modified it up a bit. They, the original ones are still available. So uh, if you want more like pad buttons, uh, you can certainly get that. If you want to have a mid-range laid out here, you can get that. So if we're saying this is the six channel, that other model would be the PMX U46BT. Uh, it does have Bluetooth and audio interface and all those other great things. And it does have quarter inch for main out. But outside of that, very, very similar to this machine. So there you go. Well, I hope you liked this video. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and bye for now.